Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another machine. A little, uh, for me, a little kind of a blast from the past. This IBM Think Center PC. Uh, I believe uh, at a point in time in the early 2000s, I had one of these sitting on my desk at work uh, in a telesales job I had. Anyways, uh, the Think Center brand was the final brand of PCs that IBM made uh, and actually transitioned over to Lenovo. So Lenovo still sells a Think the Think Center brand for their business machines, uh, but it started it started at IBM uh, where they were looking to rebrand their PCs uh, from the previous NetVista branding, uh, which part of that was the PC or uh, PC series, uh, PC 300 and the Aptiva uh, product lines. So a long line of uh, PCs that I have a lot of fond memories of uh, from the from the mid to late 90s and early 2000s. Um, so this Think Center got uh, I picked up on a donation a while ago was refurbing it to get uh, worked out and ran into a couple challenges. Um, so unfortunately, this machine uh, is not a Windows 10 machine, uh, and we'll get into get into that. But we tried valiantly to get this thing up and running to make it useful. But I thought, hey, you know what? I'd like to show it off anyway. So take a look at the front end of the bezel design. Nice sloped inward uh, air intakes uh, on the plastic bezel here. Then we've got a pair of uh, media drives. These are the original ones that, well, the original ones. These are the ones that came with it when it was donated to me. So there's a DVD burner and a standard DVD-ROM drive. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a gap in the installation here. So I'm not sure if perhaps IBM may have had option kits for media devices, for optical devices that had slightly larger bezels, maybe that matched up with the black here uh, that don't exist here. And then we've got, of course, the... Uh, the uh, ubiquitous floppy drive, and then there's a pair of USB ports down here in this little uh, gap uh, as well. And then of course our our power button. We'll flip around to the back and take a look at wah, wah, what this baby's got, and it is it is weighty. <laughs> um, you know, to showing showing from IBM when they were going back to the you know their their design instead of uh, you know simple cheap stuff, they built the sturdy boxes. So power supply. Um, it's got a, and it still has them, a lock for the case. So you can actually lock the case so that it can't be opened, which is kind of cool that the keys are still there. Um, system board here, we've got our keyboard, mouse, old style connectors. There is another system fan here, bunch of USB ports and a gigabit ethernet. Integrated audio. There is a PC speaker that's built into this as well. So it does have its own audio it's not great obviously but it does the job and then i did install a video card into this system so we weren't using the onboard graphics opening the system up is actually kind of cool again these toolless designs i always love so there's a button on each side of the case and you'll notice here this is a little it's a little bit scratched up i think when the person who who was had it in storage was had it sitting up on its side on the floor of like a basement or a garage or something so it did get a little bit scraped up on this side um which I mean, you could you could buff out and possibly cover up if you could get a, a Sharpie or something that's almost the same color as this. But anyways, um, you push in the button on either side of the case. And provided I don't have this locked, <laughs> which which might be the case, I might. <laughs> I didn't realize it. I must have had it. I must have had it locked. Yes, <laughs> I had it locked. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny, Chris. All right, so the whole thing, the whole case top just comes right off. And then we can reveal the insides of the machine here uh, to show off what it's got inside. So again, that locking mechanism is just simple. Simple arm lock here. There's an intrusion detection button you can see here. That is connected up to this part here. Right, so I know it's kind of a long run, but the intrusion detection chip this whole piece right here comes off and there's a whole uh, kind of brains here. This is, you know, before the days of uh, the Intel chips uh, where they're built into the system board and, in, and, and have an EEPROM on them or something, this was added on to this, uh, to this board to provide that functionality, uh, to provide that additional security capability. There's our PC speaker over here, our floppy disk drive, and our media drives, and you see these little handles here because there's a toolless design in this that you can actually remove this entire placement where the hard drive 
and floppy drive are, and then again where the uh, where these media drives are. These actually just come right out, and I'm not going to pull them too far because they'll fall out the way that this is up on an angle. But tool is designed again, so neat um, and and handy from a servicing perspective. Um, system wise, we've got this uh, processor here. We have four four memory DIMM slots here on this system. Um, I had a devil of a time getting, when I was trying to get the system up and running with Windows um, 10, which wouldn't work, and then Windows 7, which I had a whole bunch of driver issues with the video card I was adding in. Actually, I tried multiple video cards in the system, um, and they were all coming up with the basic, like, um, the Microsoft Display Adapter for Windows 7, and they were giving driver issues and weren't working properly at all. So I ended up having to go back on this machine, we'll see when we boot it up to Windows XP, to get it to run everything properly, uh, which everything does run great uh, on this system with Windows XP. So obviously a machine that's not gonna be for modern use, but I think there might be someone out there who's looking for an older machine maybe, who wants to have, you know, maybe some fun playing, doing some browsing, isn't going to be putting any personal information uh, on the system, could be having some fun. I know that there's there's a, a bit out there that uh, can make that work. And then again, if, you, ooh, if you've got the parts and maybe have a video card that's AGP based, that's got good Windows 7 drivers, you could certainly put that into this system. I believe the maximum memory capacity of this system will do four gig of memory which is fine for a Windows 7 machine, we'll lock it back up again. And uh, and that would be good to go. So what we're gonna do now is get this all plugged in and powered up, and we'll take a look at uh, Windows XP. All right, we are ready to boot. Lots of fond memories of Windows XP. Um, I had it running on systems for a long time, obviously, as many of us did. I think, if I remember correctly, um, from, a, from a Windows user perspective, I moved very quickly to Windows 2000 as soon as it came out, and then Windows XP as soon as it came out. And then I, um, and then I stayed on Windows XP right through, I think, until Windows 10 came out. And, um, you know, kind of just skipped over the Vista and 7 uh, uh, time period. Uh, from a from a OS perspective, so spent a lot of time using Windows XP, the green fields, fond memories. So as the system loads up, and we'll take a look at uh, what it's capable of doing. So a couple of things you have to deal with when you're running a machine like that's running Windows XP, obviously, because it is because it is no longer supported by Microsoft. It's not receiving security updates anymore. That exposes it to a number of possible malicious attacks um, that you may not be able to defend against even with third-party software. So it's very important if you're going to be running a machine with an older OS of, of any unsupported OS, you either do not connect to the internet at all, <laughs> um, or if you're going to be connecting to the internet, you, number one, are very careful where you go to in terms of the sites you go to. You... Uh, don't have any personal information on the system at all. So do not log into any websites with any IDs that you use on any other computers. Um, the reason being is if you go onto a site where there is malicious code that is capable of, of getting onto your system or, or reading data off of your system that isn't secure, it's not always about pushing stuff on, it's about pulling stuff out. Uh, they can pull sensitive data, user data, off of this system, off of your browsing information actively. And then the next time you go and use that same, those same credentials on another PC, you could be in trouble. So anyways, just a matter of just it, keep it isolated. Don't do anything on the system 
um, that you're going to do on any other computer. Um, in the case of just operating on here, I did install an antivirus software. It's Avast. Um, this is an older version of the Avast client, but it does have the latest virus definitions. So, I mean, it's very basic protection. Obviously, there's a lot more uh, security software that you could and should install on a machine like this if you're going to use it actively, but I just I installed that just to make sure that it was at least up and running and doing some protective. So we're going to open up Hardware Info. Obviously, this is the 32-bit version. We're not running uh, we're not running XP64 uh, on this machine. Uh, we're just running the standard 32-bit uh, uh, implementation of Windows XP. So we'll wait while uh, Hardware Info is going to pull sensor data off of the system, which it is still capable of doing, and we'll take a look. So again, processor-wise, we've got this Intel Pentium uh, single core hyper-threaded Northwood processor. This is a socket 478 PC, so the, the older style, right? Um, and it's incredibly rare on a socket 478 to find a processor that has an X bit disable, right? Which is the key instruction feature that you need to have to be able to run Windows 10. And that's missing from this processor. Uh, which, as I mentioned, why I couldn't get 10 running. I did have Windows 7 installed on the system, but unfortunately, the AGP video cards that I had available right now to be able to install in a system, none of them were, were, would work properly on Windows 7. I had driver issues and hang-ups with all of them, so we had to go back to, to Windows XP uh, Professional to be able to get the system up and running correctly. Um, but it does run very well, again, with, uh, with that processor and then this, in, um, this Radeon 9250 uh, graphics card. It's got 128 meg of RAM, which again, it's not a lot of memory, um, but for a standard uh, desktop build and maybe a little bit of tiny light XP gaming, uh, you might be okay. Obviously, a more powerful graphics adapter would be, would be more appropriate. Uh, Memory-wise, I only installed a total of one gig of memory, so there's four 256 megabyte sticks. At one point in time, I did have four gig of RAM installed on this machine when I was trying to install Windows 10 and then Windows 7. Um, but obviously in a Windows uh, XP environment, that much memory is really, it's not necessary. <laughs> and frankly, uh, for this machine, because it's you know kind of a lighter build, I wanted to save that memory for other machines that are gonna be able to, um, gonna be able to work with, uh, with Windows 10. Uh, hard drive wise, we've got this Mac Store 40 gig a hard drive which passes its uh, its tests. So if we go over and take a look at the drives, and we open up the Max Tor, we'll scroll down to the bottom here, and we're all clear. Um, Fifty two thousand hours, so not a very long life. It's only got about five years worth of uh, uh, worth of usage right now. So that's pretty good uh, in terms of a, a drive that should be lasting a little bit longer. Um, and again, I chose a smaller hard drive in terms of capacity because with a Windows XP machine, you don't need, um, it doesn't have a small footprint to begin with compared to Windows uh, 10, obviously, and even Windows 7 to a certain extent. Uh, Program-wise, we just have the, the standard install that was already on, this, uh, on the system as a Windows XP install. I added 7-zip uh, for, for uh, compression. Uh, we added Firefox, and then, of course, as I mentioned, the Avast free antivirus. So if you wanted to add more to this system, obviously more security software would be something that would be ideal. And now just for fun, why don't we go and take a look and do the Crab Rave test? Um, I can show you the, <laughs> the speed or lack there of speed um, and challenges with uh, an, older, an older operating system, uh, being able to try and load up uh, modern... Uh, um, modern pages so it's not just a fact that you've got an older processor obviously this one uh, this three gigahertz one core hyper threaded uh, CPU is going to have challenges the video card is going to have challenges but even just Windows XP and and the versions of the browser here with the case of Firefox uh, handling things is a lot slower as well um, you have to use older um, older messaging, older communication to be able to get things going. So we'll load up Crab Rave. And it will run, but uh, unfortunately, because of the age of the machine, the um, language it's using to communicate, the graphics capability, you're not gonna be able to do it very well. 
I didn't know I could change my voice in real time. I also don't want to watch your ad anymore, so if we could just skip it. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to run this, I believe, at 360p. Yeah, so we're running at 360p, which is really the farthest you're going to be able to push this system for for something like online um, streaming video. But again, on an older machine like this, just as an example, you've got the DVD player in here. If you had old DVDs you wanted to watch, this could handle that fine um, and probably be able to push out 1080p, 720p uh, performance off of a DVD, which I believe is DVDs are 720p in some of them, some of the later ones. Um, that should be fine to be able to handle it because the codecs and everything are, are a lot easier to manage. Whereas streaming video, it's just, it's a different, it's a different animal. So we'll take a look at the quality here. Maybe we'll even try to push it to full screen. I don't know if I'm going to do more harm than good here. <laughs> But we'll show off the screen the quality is obviously going to be low because we're only at 360p uh, but we do get you know some decent flow on here you know i can imagine you're downloading some some of your favorite movies using kazaa or napster or something and uh <laughs> And, it, and, enjoy, and enjoying this high, high fidelity 360p video, um, you, can, you can catch some of that nostalgia. But it turns out pretty good. Anyways, I'm not going to continue to go through on this one because um, the, the, the pixels are the pixels are pretty poor, pixel poor. But it is able to handle things, nonetheless. Do a little bit of crap rave. Do the dance with me. I'm doing. I'm dancing right now behind the behind the, the camera. <laughs> All right. So again, uh, an older machine, uh, a bit a little bit of nostalgia. If you were you know used old uh, older IBM machines in the past, I'm I'm you know might hang on to this. I might put it out there and see if anyone's interested in picking it up um, and using it as a you know as an offline machine or something. Um, wouldn't be part of a donation uh, uh, event here because. Uh, you know, not being able to properly run Windows 10. I would never give a machine like this to somebody to use for online learning or, or getting a job hunting or something, knowing that, you know, there's a risk. You absolutely would never go on here and log into a Google Classroom with your kids' kids classroom credentials or log into your LinkedIn account or something. The, the chance of exposing yourself is way too high. So um, just something for someone to have as a, as a, a play machine, uh, without any uh, without any personal data on it would be a lot of fun. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you uh, have you know fond memories of uh, IBM Net Vista Think Center machines, please uh, you know drop them in the comments below. I hope, as always, that you're staying safe and healthy in this uh, challenging time for us all. And uh, we will see you in the next one.